Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It is great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll talk about tensors in TensorFlow. So, what is a tensor? What is the rank, shape, axis of a tensor? And then we'll look at what is broadcasting and types of tensors. So, if you look at the TensorFlow docs, this is what you'll find. Tensors are multi-dimensional arrays with a uniform type, and they're similar to what uh, arrays are in NumPy. So if you've seen the intermediate series or if you've been working with Python, you know that NumPy np.arrays is available in Python. And so those matrices or arrays are the same as tensors in TensorFlow. Now, uh, just for vocabulary, the shape, rank, and axis of a tensor are as follows. The shape is just the length of the number of elements along each axis and i'll show you examples of these rank is the number of axis and axis is the dimension so if you have uh, uh, there is axis 0 axis 1 axis 3 etc and the size is just the total number of items in a tensor or a matrix now when we are talking about tensors uh, it can also be just a scalar number uh, so 10 can be a tensor of rank 0 and we'll look at that shortly so let's first look at axis so here we have a book and as you already know it uh, we can represent this by three axes x y and z now if we look at a tensor or a matrix that we have shown here so this is a 2d matrix so you have two rows and three columns so the shape of this would be 2 comma 3 and it has two axes axis 0 and axis 1 now if in tensorflow if you try to get the sum of this tensor along axis 0 as i just shown here what you will get is uh, the addition along each column so 1 plus 10 is equal to 11 2 plus 10 is 12 3 plus 10 is 13 so if we put axis 0 then we are using all the rows to do something column wise and vice versa if we are looking at axis 1 such as shown here then we are adding all the values in each of the rows so we are doing something uh, along each row and we are using the values in each of the columns. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, and then this is 30. So that's the general idea behind axes. And there can be more than two axes. There can be, I mean, infinite number of axes. As uh, we'll go through these uh, series, we'll see a three dimensional array could be there, or three dimensional tensor. For example, if you look at a uh, color image you have r g b uh, those would be three matrices or three tensors representing that image so that it would be a three-dimensional tensor so you have uh, the dimensions of the image itself and then the color depth so r g b so you have three stacks of matrices or tensors I, on this slide, we see that 10 number is a scalar, or just uh, you can call it a number. In TensorFlow language, that is a rank 0 tensor. So, rank 0, because as we saw in the previous slide, number of tensor axis, because it's just a number, it does not have any axis, so the number of axis is 0, and so it's a rank 0 matrix. Uh, sorry a rank zero tensor the second one uh, i'm familiar with this one as well so this is just a column vector so 1d array and this has one axis and so this would be a rank one tensor the next one is it has two axes we have uh, one we have four rows and two columns so this has a shape of four by two and this is a uh, rank 2 tensor now you would argue that this can also be represented as a 4 by 1 4 by 1 
matrix for the tensor flow dogs uh, uh, if you refer to them this is a one dimensional array so it has axis one and so it has a rank one similarly there could be n dimensions and so it uh, in general a tensor is representing uh, n dimensional uh, matrix and here if we look at now the shape of the tensors four which is just a number uh, it has a scalar shape of uh, zero so there's nothing in the square brackets in this second case this is a vector which has three values 2.0 3.0 and 4.0 and therefore this is a vector shape and it has a uh, shape is 3 now in the third case we have 3 by 2 space uh, shape because we have three column three rows and two columns so therefore we have a shape of 3 by 2 now by default the tensor uh, flow tensor flow expects that the tensors are uniform in shape what i mean by that is the number of elements along each axis number of el number uh, sorry the length of uh, number the length along each axis is uniform so let's say if we look at the axis if we look at this uh, shape here which says 2 both these orange rows have the same shape and that's what is expected and similarly if we look at the vertical height all these three rectangular boxes orange blue and green they have the same height which is two and so that's why uh, as you can see up, up here it's written every element is the same size and so we have a uniform uh, uh, tensor and as we'll see later on if this is not the case then there are uh, other ways to define those shapes now here we have those uh, tensors that we saw on the previous slide which is the three to five uh, tensor that we stack three of those on top of each other now we have another tensor which has uh, four axes so the axis uh, the first axis is represented here by three which is uh, we have three uh, individual tensors stacked on top of each other and then we have each tensor which has our two rows and four columns which is here and then it has each of these uh, stacks has a depth of five so we have the total if we look at this we have this matrix which is in front up here we have two by uh, two by four matrix and we have one two three four five of these uh, stacked in stacked next to each other and then we have again a set stacked uh, right here and again here these are some examples of bad shapes of a tensor as one would expect that uh, for example in the first case these orange uh, squares so these should be should have been the same in both in both the rows instead we have two cells that are not orange 10 and 11 they are blue again in case of uh, blue we see that this entire tensor uh, sorry this entire row is blue uh, with six values however uh, the this row and this row are just as two values that are blue so those all should have been blue throughout uh, and that's one irregularity the second one is shown in this figure we have this blue column sorry blue row it should have been in this particular stack but now it is split between the stack in front and the stack at the back and again here on the last case we have this entire tensor uh, 
where the values are missing in case of the last row. So if we look at the shapes of these tensors, uh, we'll get a none. So here we can see either the shape contains a none or the whole shape is none. And that's that's if that happens, then uh, tensor flow is unable to determine the rank of the tensor and that could throw errors during uh, when the program is getting executed. Now shifting to broadcasting, you've probably seen this uh, when working with NumPy and it is the similar uh, method here. Let's say we have these two tensors three and four and if you are trying to get a product of these these two, then we get a uh, you know, final matrix of four by three, uh, sorry, three by four, so three by one. So this one is common between these two and we get four. So we get a three by four matrix. So the way we will do that is one multiplied by one, one multiplied by two, one multiplied by three and one multiplied by four. That gives us the first row and so on for the second and the third rows. So that's uh, an example of broadcasting where these two small matrices uh, were able uh, a combination of these two small matrices by performing a, a product we get this final matrix that is shown here ragged tensors are defined in tensorflow docs as shown here this is an example where we can see that the number of elements in each row are not the same and so we do have the uh, number of uh, what you call uh, if we are looking at the shape of this we know that the number of uh, rows is four and so we get the four here for the shape however the number of columns uh, it is not able to define therefore we get a none because some of these values are missing as you can see. So here you could argue that because there are four columns, then those could be con considered as four columns and then these would be represented as null when, uh, when processing the data. So we'll see examples of those as we go through the series. But for now, the take home message is that this type of a tensor is called a rag tensor and here is an example of string tensor where each cell has a value a string value within it and here we can see that we do have the number of rows that we know and so we have the three here in the shape however the number of columns is unknown and therefore we have none represent here in the square brackets now, sparse tensors, uh, so the idea is similar to what we knew in uh, an intermediate series where we looked at uh, sparse tensors. So here, a sparse tensor is representing a dense tensor, which is shown here by referring to the non-zero indices only. So here we have just two elements in this three by four tensor, which has non-zero values and all these square or oh, empty squares, those are all, assume those are all zeros. And so the dense or the traditional way to represent this tensor would have been uh, the one shown down here, which is one zero 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 two zero 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 and a sparse way to represent that would be just to report the indices for one uh, which is zero zero and then for two which is one two then specify the values at each of those indices one and two and then finally specify the shape of the total tensor and so we do have uh, this way of representing uh, a sparse tensor so if you have matrix with a whole bunch of zeros and you want to save space uh, and do not you do not have to store all the zeros and so that's where the sparse tensor can be used 
so that was it for this video i hope in this video you learned about what tensors are in tensorflow and that's what we'll be using in keras and what are the different vocabulary terms such as rank size shape and axis in tensor and uh, and also how we can represent tensors as, as sparse tensors and we also looked at an example of broadcasting plus we also did an overview of what are different good and bad shapes of tensors we'll continue this discussion in the next video where we'll do the actual coding and first time we'll start writing code for tensorflow and keras hand in hand and walk through these uh, tensor shape size and the rank terminologies that we looked at today please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you